We are less than three weeks until the midterm elections, and it feels like, honestly, still at this point, no one can decide what the closing argument should be. Immigration? Health care? The president himself? Which is it, and why isn't it settled by now? The panel tonight. Alice Stewart is here. She's a CNN political commentator, former communications director for Republican Ted Cruz. Keith Boykin is CNN political commentator and former Clinton White House staffer. John Avalon is a CNN, CNN's senior political analyst. And Steve Rogers is a member of President Trump's re-election campaign advisory board. All right, guys. Alice Stewart. Yes. Donald Trump says um, the bumper sticker is Kavanaugh, Caravan, Law and Order, Common Sense. Listen to this. An election of Kavanaugh, the caravan, law and order, and common sense. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be a, an election of those things. Make the case that that helps Republicans keep the majorities. It helps the base because they, they like all of those issues. They think all of that's important. Of course, common sense is, is, is really important. The problem with that is it's a little bit too long for a bumper sticker. <laughs> so I think what will work, and talking with different people will work, and I'm going to protect myself from Keith here, is if Republicans <laughs> go out there and say, Vote for Republicans. We'll give you jobs, not mobs. And that is something that clearly it, gener it generates the, the base. It gets them excited. And on the heels of Kavanaugh, th that's exactly what they need. So I'm going to, like, make sure that nothing happens well, wait, right here. First and foremost, <laughs> someone help me understand, John Avalon, anyone, anyone, John yeah. Avalon. What is this common sense? What? Common sense. How is what is that? What are you? What? That was not clear to me, and I live and breathe this stuff. Why is common sense the slogan here? You know, I, because I think that's what Republicans see themselves as standing up for, particularly when they're trying to be a check on what they see as the PC excesses of the far left. Um, but I think to Alice's point, the other line he offered up last yeah. night, which was Democrats are for the mob and Republicans are for jobs, is, is an example of of I think uh, Trump's instinctive marketing. Uh, br brilliance when it comes to politics. Yeah. It is simple. It rhymes. That is pretty much the only thing it has going for it, but it's very much on message. That other kind of four-part litany is a mess. Um, but Democrats traditionally have kind of a hard, hard time coming up with a slogan that really fits. I mean, make America great again versus stronger together, which was one of a hundred Hillary Clinton slogans they <laughs> field tested, is a symbol of that challenge that Democrats got to got to come up with a good answer for. I, I don't think that slogans make a difference anymore. Okay. We, we saw we saw make America great again. We saw build the wall. We saw lock her up. We saw all the, you know, drain the swamp, all the slogans from the Trump campaign in 2016. And they're all lies. And we see but that you remember now. them. We remember them, but we now know that they're all lies. Mm -hmm. And the American people who who kind of had a thought that maybe Donald Trump wasn't a liar, know for sure that he's a liar. So this whole jobs, not mobs thing is preposterous. He said this in the same speech where he's also talking about, he's, he's basically praising a guy who body slammed a reporter. Mm -hmm. He's praising a Republican member of Congress who body slammed a reporter. And they have the audacity to talk about civility and jobs, not mobs. It's hypocrisy of the worst proportion. Well, if, if hypocrisy was the measure, um, then, well, let's... Just stop now. Let's, let's all go get a drink then. Exactly. <laughs> what tells you I already haven't? But Steve, yes. Um, yes. To, to Keith's point, though, couple jobs, things. not mobs. Yeah, a couple of things. And then... I, I, I guess, you know, we don't hear much about Eric Holder and Maxine Waters. Confront them, charge them. Uh, chase them out of rest. Well, now, wait a minute. Why? Here we go. Let me finish, Steve, please. But why are they bad? Okay. Why are they so wrong look, if the president's promoting the same look, thing? Look, look, None just, of them are the uh, president of the United States. Look, I, I don't want to get on a long debate over that. You just mentioned it. You can't mention it on Dodds and Dodds. You just mentioned it. Stand up for yourself. Let him finish. Go, Steve. The fact of the matter is, with him, I know you're not going to like to hear this, tongue in cheek, you know, he certainly doesn't recommend people body slamming people. But getting back to... He literally just supported somebody who literally did that. Getting back, getting back to reality, I know you like the word reality. I'm fond of it. Good show. Good show. Reality, all right? Reality is the economy strong. Reality is the military strong. Reality is taxes were cut. Reality is the unemployment rate in the minority communities is the lowest ever. That's reality. This raises a really important point. Yes, it does. Why isn't the message that Trump is touting then economy he is saying jobs but why does he why does he feel the need to talk immigration then when he has a tough spot he is in a tough spot on this he wants to say at one turn i'm the guy i've been in office now for you know whatever two years 
I have fixed this because I'm the guy who promised he was going to fix it. But he also needs to still stir up outrage to get people mad enough to come out and vote on it. Oh. That's, this is the case of let Trump be Trump. And he will go out there and be Trump and, and say those outlandish things because that works for him and it generates the base. What we saw last night and we see in a lot of these other rallies with Senate candidates, yeah. Matt Rosendale said last night, Vote for me and I will continue the Trump agenda, which is jobs, which is the economy, which is tax cuts. So really, it's like we have the grown up in the room and then we have the the the, 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 the president. The, the, the president. <laughs> which is, so, hey, so, but, insane about the circumstance for it. No, but, 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 let, but let's worry about this. I mean, the president's got a very strong instinctive playbook. It is deny, deflect, divide. And one of the amazing moves he does is he will be the paragon of incivility at these rallies, but write it off to entertainment, and then accuse the other team right. of being the paragon right. of incivility and mob. Okay, right. You use the term stir outrage. You know who start outrage and, and really galvanized the Republican base? Those senators that were at the confirmation hearing of Judge Kavanaugh. Sure. They start sure. outrage. They sure. The okay. way that they, man they, was treated was they, an outrage. You completely misread that because they I also did. outraged women in America and they outraged the Democratic base. So we'll see what happens in, at the end of the midterms. But I think that you're going to find, you're going to be unpleasantly surprised by the results. I think we're going to be pleasant, me, you know, our side will we'll, be pleasantly we'll, surprised we'll, we'll, and we'll see. We'll and come I'll back next what. month and we'll I'll, talk I'll, about I'll, it. I don't smoke, but I'll give you a cigar. We'll come back next month and we'll <laughs> debate it. Yeah. Okay. That's the nice thing about elections is we do have a basic reference. Referendum. Republicans are more energized than they were yeah. before the Kavanaugh uh, turnout. But, but, but look, you but can where? see it. The president wants to talk about immigration. He wants to talk about the caravan. And he's got a whole network that's willing to parrot his messaging agenda. Stand by for more.